you say you you don't have the advice from certain perspectives, and I would say to you that the things that you haven't experienced in your life, the experience that you don't have, what you can give is the word of God. Amen. Amen. Because there's one thing I always say, especially when I'm teaching a room full of older deacons. I tell them all the time, I don't have the life experience you have. Mm -hmm. I haven't been through all of the ups and downs you've been through. Mm -hmm. I haven't been around long enough. Mm -hmm. Well, well. But what I do have is the Bible. <laughs> and so since the Bible trumps all of us that's what I teach from and then I, and then I start in on the class uh, a lot of a lot of elder men uh, seem to cling on to you when you respect them and when you humble yourself before God in front of them and when you think you're high and mighty it's hard to teach an older man Amen. <laughs> That's just the truth from heaven. Amen. Um, we we were in a, a really a really beautiful song from David about what God had done for him. We were we were we were aggressively going through how David began to talk about how God had fashioned him in such a way so that he was able to win wars and to overcome evils and to, and to, and to overcome hills and mountains. Matter of fact, we kind of got to the point to where David talks about the deer and how he makes his feet like eyes feet. Uh -huh. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And then we explain why the deer was so paramount in what David was trying to get across to us. Mm -hmm. We talked about how the, the deer or the hind would have four feet mm -hmm. so that when he traveled amongst cliffs and mountains, he was able to stand on steep cliffs mm -hmm. because it would catch the fork in the foot. And so David uses that as a metaphor or as an example to teach us that God fashions us that way with the things of life. Amen. Remember, we said there are some things that may never change in your life, but God will fashion you so that you can deal with it. Amen. That, that's, that's literally what, what he's meaning when he says, he makes my feet like mine's feet. Right. That means he, he makes it so that whatever it is that you're dealing with that's not leaving, he fixes it so you can handle it All right. and keep on going higher in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Now, now, we're right in verse number 35. We'll move down some more. Um, but we're talking about how God enlarged David to handle things. And then we're going to talk about how he, in, well, this is enabling David. This is how he enables David. Uh, in 20, verse 29, he's enlightened. In verse 35, 30 through 35, he empowers David. Right in, uh, right when we go to 35, 36, we're going to see how he enlarged, enlarged David. All right, so let's let's dig a little more. He teaches my hands to war, so that a bow of steel is broken by mine arms. Thou hast also given me a shield, the shield of thy salvation. Uh, just to close out the hind feet, um, Deuteronomy tells us. That it is God's strength that gives us the activity to work. That's what Deuteronomy tells us. It's God's strength that strengthens us to work. That's what David is saying here. It was God's strength that strengthened him for war. That strengthened him to battle. All right? Uh, uh, 36, it says, he has given... He has also given me the shield of thy salvation, and the, thy gentleness has made me great. 
Now he, you see he's enlarging David. David is now at the latter part of his tenure as king of Israel. Come on. Pastor, please stop over here. Oh, we're in 2 Samuel 22. 2 Samuel 22. 2 Samuel 22. Oh, 2 Samuel 22. <laughs> this is just, this is, the parallel is Psalms 18. The parallel to this particular chapter is Psalms 18. So you can look at Psalms 18 and it almost reads the same. All right? So if you ever want to know what the parallel to this is, because this is in the Psalms, Amen. it almost reads the exact same in Psalms 18, okay? Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy gentleness has made me great. We said he's in the latter part of his kingship. But notice, as a leader in the latter part of his kingship, now Israel has come back together again, right? Because remember, there was a lot of, a lot of division. Some people went with, with uh, Amasa and some people went with Joab and it was at one point some people went with Saul. Now Israel has come back under his headship and he has made him great. As a matter of fact, you hear a lot of times even in the New Testament how Hebrews talks about the greatness of David. Okay? Uh, verse number 37. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me so that my feet did not slip. Notice he's saying, who did it? Okay, I want you to keep that in the back of your head. I have pursued my enemies and destroyed them and turned not again until I had consumed them. Uh, uh, this is where the parallel would be uh, God will make your enemies your footstool. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Yeah. True, true. So, so, so what happens is enemies aren't necessarily there just to make you feel bad. Amen. 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 Enemies are there to teach you a lesson. Amen. And sooner or later, they become building blocks under your feet. Mm -hmm. Because when you get hurt bad enough by an enemy, you don't go back that way anymore. Amen. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. Amen. 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 Uh, I, 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 I remember when I got uh, got caught stealing out of losses. <laughs> Store on the call my mom. And, and that was a whooping I didn't want to feel anymore. <laughs> so I, did, I didn't feel like I lost it anymore. <laughs> Amen. All right. But you didn't stop stealing. <laughs> I, I, I told you I just didn't feel like I lost it. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, now, 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 listen. Listen, saints. It has to come to a point into your life to where you can say the things I used to do, Amen. I don't do no more. Amen. 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 So, so don't, don't look, don't look at me like you haven't done nothing. All of us done something. I know that's right. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, I remember that you tell me that. Amen. Uh, Thirty-nine. And I have consumed them and wounded them that they could not arise. Yea. They are falling under my feet. Mm -hmm. So if you notice, David is talking about how God has enlarged him. Yeah. Because you remember when David, when David started uh, 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 champion, being a champion over Israel, he started conquering the nations around him mm -hmm. so that Israel could have peace in their land. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. And that was quite common. Those that did Israel good when they came out of Egypt, David and Israel didn't bother them. But those that tried to harm them, David conquered them. Some were even totally destroyed. Amen? Now you remember, that was the promise he made to his father Abraham. You remember that? He says, everybody that will be against you, I will be against them. Remember that? He told that day, but I was way back. Right? And everybody that will be for you, I will be for them. Right? 
You remember, it's almost like in the text, there was a question, it's almost like a question was raised. But what about those that are against us and they want to follow your ways? The scripture calls them proselytes. Mm -hmm. yes. They weren't born Jewish. They weren't born as Hebrews. Amen. But they wanted to follow uh, Abraham's God. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So God said, to bring them in. Mm -hmm. Teach them my precepts. Uh -huh. And all of the promises that I promised you, I promised to them. Right. See, God never intended for just the Hebrews and Israel be saved to be saved. Mm -hmm. God intended for, because of the promise to Abraham, Israel to be the pillar of what it looks like to walk with God. All right. Amen. All right. And so people would, would look at Israel and see how good and how God had enlarged them and see how good God had been to them. And then they would develop a thirst to follow after Abraham's God because God was treating Abraham so good. Amen. Amen. Do you know that's the Christian life? Amen. You know that that's what our lives are all about? Yes, sir. People are supposed to see and witness how good God is to us. And we are supposed to walk with God in such a way that they see us walking differently than they walk. Uh -huh. Amen. True. Amen. We may have the same features. Yeah. We may wear the same clothes. Mm -hmm. But they ought to see something or recognize something in us that's, right. that's different from everybody else. Amen. Right. Amen. 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 I remember years ago, uh, I was in high school. And I had a high school sweetheart. Mm -hmm. All right. And uh, I was nervous when I went over her house and met her parents. And uh, I looked around after about a month or so of dating her. And her mother said to me one day, and I hadn't been in church probably in about maybe six or seven years. She said to me, out of the blue, I can tell you was raised in church. All right, all right. Because of the way you treat all of the elders around you. Uh -huh. People can tell whether or not you have the Christian stain <coughs> in your soul. Amen. 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 That's right, Pastor. Amen. 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 People can tell by the way you treat them. They know that something is different about you, that God has enlarged you because you have a different kind of way of handling people. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. Come on, man. Pastor, on several occasions, you can tell that I have been out. Yeah. Especially the rest of us other places. And people have asked, well, which preachers were you? <laughs> <laughs> you remember that happened to us? We were at one time. You are not carrying the Bible and, or big Bible in my hand. And I promise you, mm -hmm. I think I had on a plaid shirt mm -hmm. and some cactus. Mm -hmm. And Deke had on some, I think he had on some jeans. You had on something real, real common. Yeah, Lord, and we just sitting there eating and talking and laughing and, you know, we doing our thing. And his brother walked up to us out of the blue. Sure did. I don't know. I don't even think we were talking about church at the time. I think we were just kind of just chewing the fat. You know, when you first meet up with somebody, the weather's nice and how's everything with your family and all of that. And this brother walked up to us and started talking to, talking to us about the Bible. Sure I don't know how God does that. I don't even know why God does it. But God has a way of giving you a kind of aura. Yes, he does. That emanates from you to other folk. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. Talking about David being enlarged. To let people know that you belong to him. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Right? Now, mind you, mind you, Christian people don't always act Christian. Uh -oh. No, sir. But if they're really Christians in their heart, you can still tell that they're Christian. Amen. 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 That's because God enlarged you. Let's 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 consume. Uh, let's uh, let me let's go to forty. For Thou hast girded me with strength to battle. Them that rose up against me, has Thou subdued? under me. Notice he's telling us that God is doing all of this. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Thou 
has also given me the next of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked, but there was none to save, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did stamp them as the mire of the street and did spread them abroad. When, when David sits in his kingship and Israel's, is, Israel's territory is expanded, David is telling us now that he is at a place where he can finally serve as king because he spent most of his life fighting. Hmm? Most of it. He spent his, most of his life he spent fighting. Uh, ten, over 10 years he spent running. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. But David was busy while he was fighting wars and leading Israel because theologians tell us that he writes over 70 of the Psalms. So David was spending a whole lot of time with God while he was doing all of those other things. That's why I kind of look at people funny when they say they can't do stuff for the Lord. You know, they... they they, they get so busy doing everything else that God gets the leftover. All right, all right. Yeah, yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. And what should happen, that should be flip-flop. Right. Mm -hmm. God should get the most. Mm -hmm. And the world should get the leftover. Amen. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's what happens every week for me. I'm with the Lord all week long. And you get the overflow of my time with him. Amen. That's what the congregation gets. Mm -hmm. See, because God has to work on me first. Amen. He got some stuff he got to fix up in me before I get in that pulpit. Because I'm messed up. Amen. And it don't take long. Right after I leave out the pulpit, Monday morning, I need the Lord. All right. All right. True. Amen. It don't take long. By the time I leave the pulpit and get back to the office, I need the Lord. Amen. True. To get me, start getting me ready for the next Sunday. Amen. Right? Amen. But that's the goal of God enlarging us. Is that he fills us so much that we have so much time spent with him all during the day that people see him in us. Where you don't look like yourself. Matter of fact, you look better than you did. <laughs> See, because that's what God does. He says, when he says he's going to give you life and life more abundantly, yes. the abundant life is the closeness with him. Amen. People think abundant life is new cars and houses and Come on, man. You know God is so much bigger than your material. Amen. Amen. When you walk in close with God, it don't matter what's going on around you. Because you already know whatever it is you need, he's going to supply you walking with him. Just think about it. If your daddy is holding your hand, he's not going to let nothing happen to you. Amen. You know how it is, and, and the baby's leg is shorter, and you walking with your longer legs, and they just trying to keep up with you. <laughs> but they ain't gonna let nothing happen to you, even if they gotta pick you up and walk with you. Yeah. Yeah. That's what God does for us. Yeah. Mm. And the closer you get to Him, matter of fact, I like when He picked me up because I'm closer to His heart. Mm. Amen. That's good. But that's what enlarging is. Is God now doing the things for you that you knew you couldn't do for yourself? Yeah. Ain't no way on God's green earth a teenager was supposed to beat a Goliath. No. But it happened. Amen. 44, thou hast delivered me from the strivings of my people. Mm -hmm. 
Thou hast kept me to be head of the heathen, a people which I knew not shall serve me. Strangers shall submit themselves unto me. As soon as they hear, they shall be obedient to me. This is the Lord establishing David. Mm -hmm. So you see, he enlarged him first, mm -hmm. and then he establishes him. Mm -hmm. Here it is, uh, uh, 46. Strangers shall fade away, and they shall be afraid out of their close places. The Lord liveth, and blessed be my rock, mm -hmm. and exalted be the God of the rock of my salvation. Right. Look at what David is saying. He's saying, I'm not only established or enlarged in Israel, I'm enlarged and I'm established by those that live around us. Mm -hmm. Amen. They hear about King David and they respect him. Mm -hmm. They hear about the conquest of David and they fear him mm -hmm. because they realize now, according to 2 Samuel 22, that he got a God working for him. Amen. Right? Same with you and I. People are supposed to know not to fool with us. <laughs> but we got somebody working for us that can take care of business. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. So right now, at this particular point, David, Bible said he's the man right now. He's, <laughs> he's the top king now. <laughs> David is David is David is now in a position to where God has allowed him to look back. Now, this is what he's doing. He's looking back and he's giving us what God has done for him and he's telling us where he is from what God has done. Right? Mm -hmm. So, if, if you notice, he talks a lot about how God was his, was his warrior, his, mm -hmm. his strength, mm -hmm. how he did all of these things for him, how he enlarged his feet, how he equipped him to handle things he couldn't handle on his own. You know, he's looking back and he's giving you his history lesson about himself. Mm -hmm. All right, all right. But he's not telling you that he did any of it. Right. No, sir. Right. All God did. Yeah. See, it's okay to be proud. Yes, sir. It's okay. It's okay to be proud of yourself. There's nothing <coughs> wrong with that. The problem is we take our proud and make it prideful. Mm -hmm. See, it's a difference. Because mm -hmm. Proverbs tells us that pride comes right before fall. Mm -hmm. oh, yes, that's the word. Come on, come on. We have a membership pass now. And as you used to always say that I'm boasting in the Lord. Yes, yes. Because, because now it's almost as if uh, you're 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 giving people the big picture of your life, mm -hmm. but in the big picture of your life, they see who the one who's orchestrating everything. Mm -hmm. Amen. Right, right. Yeah. So when God is using you, yeah. He's using you so that people can see Him. Mm -hmm. All right. Amen. That's how God gets the glory out of your life. Amen. Because he uses you to help them see him. Mm -hmm. And then that means that your life becomes a glorified life because you're giving God glory in your day-to-day -day activity because you're used, being used by God to help somebody else. Amen. That's what it's all about, saints. That's what it's always been about. Amen. Right? Come on. As we say, we Christians say all the time that, that what he's done for me, he'll do the yeah, same. Yeah, do the same. And, and I think a lot of times what happens is that sometimes we get stuck in the Old Testament hierarchy. So we'll think that the pastor is way up here and we way down there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, That's not how it works. No, oh, amen. The pastor is way up here, and so are you. Amen. 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 
it, it's, it's not supposed to be me way up here and y'all way down there. No, it's supposed to be us way up here yeah. and cry and climbing higher and higher. Yeah. Amen. Amen. That's real Christianity. When the saints of God are moving together and growing together and breathing together for the glory of God together, that somebody might see us together and join in and grow and breathe with us. And see, a lot of times people will get in church and they got to have a sidecar or an underling. Somebody to, to, to make it seem like I'm the man. All right? In the Old Testament, they had armor bearers. In the New Testament, they're deacons. That's not true. Amen. That's cutting up a lot of stuff in some of these churches. Because huh? uh, cause in our faith, we recognize two offices. Pastor and the deacons. Amen. 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 You, 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 you got to do it according to the way God has it because God sets the order. Yes, he does. We just supposed to follow. Amen. 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 And if the deacons are deacons, the pastor is pastor, the ushers are usher, nobody's out of place. You're going, walk, you're going to see a church start to go higher. Amen. Amen. And higher. Amen. Choir singing, musicians playing higher. Amen. Because everybody now is working in their position to do what God has called them to do. And now we can move together because now we're moving just like a body. Amen. Amen. That Corinthians talk about this. Amen. Right? Amen. <laughs> so God is establishing David here. And he's showing how not only is Israel underneath and supporting the ministry with David, those that are around him respect David's God because you know they don't come after David no more. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. He's established now. Amen. Verse number 48, I think. It is God that avenges me and bringeth down the people under me and that bringeth me forth from my mm -hmm. enemies. Thou also hast lifted me up on high above them that rose against me, rose up against me. Thou hast delivered me from the violent man. I oftentimes, I oftentimes hear about people's struggle with other people. As a matter of fact, about mm, 67, 68% of my counseling sessions are about people who are bothered by other people. My Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's it. Let me go on the phone with them or in the office with them. Mm -hmm. Somebody that took their money or somebody that somebody uh, died or, or, or somebody, a mother, a daughter, they can't get along and they fussing and fighting and they want you to come in and, and give them a scripture that's going to make them feel better, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know. But I want you to know that God will deliver you from the violent man. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Yes, sir. God has his ways of taking care of those. And David is telling you that he did it for him. Mm -hmm. He just said it, what he done for us. Amen. Yeah, that is true. Therefore, I will give thanks unto thee. We do a good on time. Mm -hmm. I will give thanks unto thee, O Lord. Among the heathen, I will sing praises unto thy name. I love this verse. Yes, yes, yes. Because some of, us, some of us are so reserved in church. <laughs> you know, we, we say praise the Lord, and some of y'all just. <laughs> or some of us are too nervous about what somebody won't say. Well, right. Yeah. Right? <laughs> I'm, 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 I look at it every week. Amen. Our Deke was up here. I mean, he was singing one of my, one of the, my favorite hymns, and he was rolling, boy. He was rolling. Mm -hmm. I was saying, "Sing, come on, Deke. We 
Put your weight on it, D. He was going. He said Amen. he needed to be real. Amen. And y'all was looking at him like he had just grew a foot out of his head. <laughs> But, but I, I learned from my auntie years ago. She said, don't worry about everybody, everybody else not praising. Amen. You worship. You pray. She said, if they don't go along with you, that's their business. Right. You know how good God been to you. Yeah. 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 So you don't let other folk, heathen, People that don't believe, church folk that are too tired and too wore out and too busy from the week, <laughs> stop you from praising God. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Amen. When you go to church, boy, she said, lay it all on the line. You know, I used to tell me, you know, I used to tell me how you love playing basketball and you was in college playing in the middle and you scored and you got this many rebounds. Do that in church. Teach I know that's right. Lay it all on the line. When you leave church, you all feel like you've been to worship. And, it's, and it should never be because what the choir say. It should never be because what the piano played or what the deacon yeah. played. It should be because you want to give God all of his glory. Yeah. All of his praise. Yeah. That, that's what David is saying. I don't care. You remember, you remember, you remember he was he was dancing and McCall looked out of the window? Mm -hmm. And he and he was and he was just he was just going. He, he was just going clothes and stuff just coming yes, off. And he out there in his ephod, he just danced yes. his clothes off. And she looking out there, you are erudite. You you August, you, you, you this, you, you the king. What you doing out there looking like that in front of the people? He said, wait a minute. Yeah. Wait a minute. But you think that was something. <laughs> <laughs> See, your best praise mm -hmm, mm -hmm. is when you stop worrying about what's That's around right. you That's right. and you focus in on what God is doing through Woo! you. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sometimes I'm in that pulpit and it feel like I'm in this whole church by myself. Mm -hmm. like that. Yes, yes. It's all right. I hear y'all out there. But sometimes I feel like I'm just up there and it's just me and God. Amen. And I feel good yes, about it. Amen. Uh -huh. But that's when you start to really give God true praise. Amen. When it don't matter who's involved. Amen. Right? I, I was doing it there. I just put on one of the songs I like, one of them good, good, thank you God songs. Mm -hmm. And my children were over on their computers. Wife was doing something over by the table. And it felt like I was sitting in that house by myself. It was just me and God. And they keep up just much noise. You know, you know, you know how, especially boys, the louder it gets, the better it is for them. <laughs> Girls too. <laughs> but because I was with the Lord, yes, sir. it didn't matter. It didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. That ought to be the same for each and every one of us. Amen. Do what David did. Look back over your life. <coughs> Amen. Start to pin in your mind how good he's been. Let's do 51. I'm going to move a little bit to the next chapter. He is the tower of salvation for his king. He showed mercy to his anointed. Unto David and to his seed. That, that's us. That's us. <laughs> <right>. <laughs> Forevermore. Thank you, Lord. I like that. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. And 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 when you when you look at uh, <coughs> Romans eleven, it kind of gives you how how those that weren't born Hebrew or Jewish, mm -hmm. how God adopts us. Amen. Uh, he presents kind of he presents a picture of an olive tree. Read it sometime. I'm telling you, it's good. And he says those branches that were on that tree 
because they would not obey and would not yield, he, they were broken off. Mm -hmm. But then he says something about us. He says, but we were grafted. Yeah. Yes. 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 Uh, skin graft is when they cut a piece of skin from a certain part of your body and put it on another part of your body. Oh, right? Yeah. But God grafts us in even though we were never part of the body. Mm -hmm. He just picks us up from outside of the household of Israel. Yes. Outside of the household of Abraham. Outside of the household of David. And he says, come here. That's what, that's what uh, rising from the dead is. When he rises from the dead, that's the signature on the adoption papers for us. Did, did y'all hear what I said? When he rises, he said, oh, now did you mind? Amen. You, you, you belong to me now. And I signed it with my blood. All right. Yeah, all right. Right? And he could never put us away because he chose to graft us in. Mm -hmm. Yes, thank you. Good Lord. And that is what the story, the song of David, when you see it, is so pretty. Mm -hmm. It's so beautiful. And he's saying he's not going to neglect God or give him any less. As a matter of fact, when he is established, it seems like David focuses in more. That's how life should be. More and more, we ought to focus in more and more on the Lord. Amen, somebody? Come on, we'll move on. My children, when they want something <coughs> from me, yeah. they either don't want to buy out their own money or they, or they want my money. Yeah. So when Dad over here, David said, You've never seen his wife for sale. But she is everything. Oh, I wish I could have used that on my dad. But that's good. I, 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 you can kind of tell when you want something, too. Because the tone in their voice is even more respectful. Dad, what you got to do to that? <laughs> You got anything to do. And the first thing comes in the back of your mind, what you want. <laughs> but, that, that, but that's how God is. Yes, he is. God, 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 he wants us around him. Amen. I, I'm moving. I got to do a little bit of 23. But you remember how you used to play that little game with your child and you put a piece of candy in one hand? And then you put behind your back. Amen. Amen. And then you tell them, guess which yes. hand it's in. Yes. Right? You was going to give them the candy anyway. anyway. Amen. 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 But you're playing the game with yes. them. Because you want them around you. Yes. 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 That's, that's, what, that's, that's what Revelation, when he says there's 10,000 blessings in my right hand. God is saying, come on. Yes. Come on. Yes. I'm going to give you the blessing anyway. But I want you around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So which blessing is the hand? Which hand is the hand? That's God doing to us. He loves us so much, Sister Jewel, he wants us around him all the time. 23. Now these be the last words of David. David, the son of Jesse, said, And the man who was raised up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet psalmist of Israel said, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. Now, this is too much to break down. I don't, I don't have a lot of time to break this down. But notice how David tells us that God's Spirit is what causes him to speak. All right. God's spirit. Uh, let me see if I can. Let me see if I can bring it a little closer. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and it's profitable for doctrine, reproof, for instruction in righteousness. That the man of God may be duly furnished 
unto all good works. Amen. Now, let, let me, let me, all scripture is given that, that, that by the inspiration of God, mm -hmm. it literally means God breathed. Amen. It literally means when you inhale, he gives you the wind and the breath and the words to exhale. That's what that, that's what that scripture is really dealing with. So when somebody tells you that the white man wrote the Bible, uh, that's a lie. Amen. What happens is God used man to write his thoughts, Amen. his words, Amen. his ruach, his breath, his spirit. God uses man to write his, his logos word. And the written word becomes the breathed word when it is preached. I almost shake in tears before I preach. Every Sunday, I could feel the tickle in my throat and the tear in the back of my ear, my tear ducts. Because I'm looking for God to breathe on me. Because if he don't preach, y'all not going to get a word. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. right. That's right. True. You know that's the truth. And a lot of guys sometimes get so far in self mm -hmm. that God is not breathing. They are. Oh, that's right. That's right. That's, right. That's, right. Yeah. that's why I love the Lord. And he told me when I write, I always, I always write sermons with a lot of scripture in it. Amen. So that even if I preach a bad sermon, you can't never say you didn't get a word. <laughs> Saints, we will go some more in 23. I wanted to get to verse 7, but time is well spent. And I want you to take the time out to read that 23. Uh, David is, uh, the death of David is in 1 Kings chapter 2, 1 through 12. It's not mentioned in Samuel, okay? I looked it up earlier, that's all God. I'm, I'm not smart, I just looked it up. I, I had a cheat sheet. Amen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> First Kings chapter two. All the time I tell people, I'm not the sharpest knife in the drawer. I just read a whole lot and come and repeat it to y'all. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we want to be sure that we go through 23 and be ready, be ready for it when we come back. Uh, uh, next week, I, I believe we are going to be recording the revival that Wednesday. If if, if, if my wife doesn't record, I will. Amen. So I want I want to I want to thank you uh, for all of you who are watching. Please pray for the revival, church. Please pray, 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 pray. We want somebody's life to be changed. Amen. 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 Uh, if we have blessed you in any way. Go on to our website, www.holygrovembc.org. Amen. Amen. You will be able to give on the website if this ministry has blessed you anyway. Please give. God bless you. Let us circle up the prayer. Amen. Amen. Amen.